Hey, welcome to another episode of C-Stop Solutions. For those of you who haven't been following along, shame on you, but it's okay, I'll give you a quick recap. We had a blowout in our 69 Lincoln Continental on our way home from Carlisle, fall swap meet and auction. And it wasn't a full blowout, it was tire failure. And I decided to start working on replacing the tire and here's what we ended up with for our failure. Pretty wild. So, this episode's gonna be a quick and dirty one. I'm just gonna replace all four tires on it. Ended up going with Amazon tires. Uh, I'm surprised this failed the way it did. I don't know what caused it. If anybody out there does know, please tell me in comments. I suspect it had something to do with the age of the tire. But um, when you look at the treads and stuff, you know, really, this doesn't look bad at all. In comparison to most of the tires that I've, I mean, I've replaced way worse tires than this that I drove on for years and never had a problem. So, without further ado, As you can see, I got a jump start on things with the camera not rolling. What happened was I sold my Jeep Wrangler, which is where I used to, whenever I would buy things like tires, I used to put them in the Jeep Wrangler. Well, as a result, I had to walk to the closest national tire and battery and load up my little cart. I'm just kidding. Ordered them from Amazon, showed up the other day. So here's our damage inside here. Not too bad. But uh, I really did a number on the sheet metal right here. It's okay, I'll put a little uh, little rust proofing on there. And then if you look at our muffler, that didn't fare too well. Sounds great now though. I'm thinking I'm gonna replace the mufflers with something. I just gotta figure out what diameter this pipe is. And I'll put something in there. Our brakes I was gonna replace, they're actually in good condition. But check this out. The whole thing caused my, my quarter panel to rust. What the heck, right? So step one, we pull the tire off. Step two, we pull the valve stem out. Very easy, you get yourself one of these little nifty valve stem tools from wherever. Valve stem out, this way air can escape as you're breaking the bead. Voila. I know French. And step three, we break the bead. I always like to break it from the inside of the wheel first. I don't know why, I forget why. There was a reason, I remember one time I did that and ever since then I've done that and it worked best. Wow, 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 wow. If anyone's ever curious what they're doing in National Tire and Battery while you're in the waiting room, this is it. Pretty exciting stuff, groundbreaking if you will. It's like a behind the scenes, you know, what do they do at NASA? Our wheel up on our machine. I guess this is step four or so. All right, we got our trusty doohickey. All right, we'll bring this over. Okay, and what we do is we take our doohickey and we wedge it through so that this lip catches the bottom of the tire through the middle. And to do that, sometimes you need to pick this side up a little bit or push it down so that the bead kind of goes in the center section of the wheel, which is like a low point. Uh-oh, important call. Well, scam likely. Let's see what they have to say. Hello? We'll just let them talk for a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just realized something. I'm showing you this all wrong. Let's try that again. Take our doohickey and we break the top bead over the uh, rim first. Oh, that's a little easier, right? And then we just rotate this. Now we go for the, uh, the bottom bead. And we're doing 
on this one, that's when we need to kind of get the tire up a little bit so that it's in the, the shallow spot, I guess you would call it, of the wheel. So you can see right down in here how I have this tool on the outside of the bead, I have it captured. And you can see what I mean over here about how I have the rim kind of up in the shallower part, the, uh, the bead up in the shallower part of the wheel. You can actually see the shallower part of the wheel fairly clearly right there. See how you have that lip? So you want your bead inside there when you're doing this. Okay, now we just pry this up and over. There. Now that it's over, this piece here, I forget what they call that, but I'll show you. Here's our tool, we lifted it from the other side, and now it's over this, so we can just rotate it, and this will pull it right off the ram. Watch this, feat of magic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotta get the right pedal. Isn't that cool? Nope. Uh-oh. Jammed on something. Well, all right. That can happen sometimes. Not a problem. Let's reverse it. Let's give it a shot again. Ooh. Hmm. All right. Let's make sure this is up as high as it can be. There it goes. It's off. I guess it got caught on some of the rust or something on the wheel. No big deal. That's it. That's how to remove a tire. Next up, installing a tire. Also, we'll look at wheel balancing. For wheel balancing, there's many ways to do it. The right way to do it is probably with a modern digital balancer. I have one. I just never wired it up. So instead, I use my trusty Harbor Freight cheapy wheel balancer. And that actually works just fine. For, uh, for 15 inch wheels, it works fine. If you start talking low profile stuff, not so hot. So here's something I found recently. A lot of the time when wheels are balanced, it's because of some sort of an issue with the wheel itself, not as much with the tires. All right, so let's take our wheel off. You can see we still have weights on it. Let's see how the wheel alone and just the wheel is balanced. So to my surprise, the wheel is off quite a bit. It might be kind of hard to see it, but you can see that the, there's too much weight on this side. So the ball is over here. So, you know, if I were to try and balance it out, I would have to put probably two or three ounces over here, and then that would level out. Uh, I thought the wheel itself would be pretty well balanced with those weights on it, but because it is not, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the weights off. Look at that, and where the misbalance is, is actually over here where the weight is. And over here, So it actually looks like this wheel used to be balanced. It looks like that tire was the misbalance before. And they went ahead and accounted for it by putting weights on the wheel. But that makes me wonder if that tire always had issues and that's why it eventually blew. So different people apply different things around the beat of the rim. I like to use this stuff. It lasts forever. A little Murphy's tire and tube mounting compound. It's great. It's a, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's great. <laughs> it's kind of like the Great Gatsby. All right, so you just grab your little applicator brush, which in my case is a you know, little paintbrush, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you just put a bunch of this stuff on. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, just use soapy water, which that works okay, uh, especially with a lot of your more modern rims and things like that. However, I'll show you the pitfalls of what happens if you use soapy water because at that point, you put water inside your wheel. Why don't you come over and take a gander at this? Take note. See how that bottom crager is solid rust? That is because somebody used a lot of soapy water when they put that one on. Here's the other Kragers that came off the exact same car. And those ones didn't seem to have that problem. But yeah, yep. Modern, I guess, aluminum wheels, you don't have to worry about it as much. Note, not aluminum. All right, here's where we actually push the tire on over the rim. Oh, I almost forgot. You gotta pull the old valve stem out first. 
You definitely don't want to reuse valve stems. I've done that twice and both times the old valve stem failed. I don't know what causes it, but it does. You could use a variety of tools. I like to use our trusty valve stem puller. Very, very simple. You just put this on like this. Huh? Huh? That'll make a pneumatic one. No, I'm just kidding. And you just pry it out. Boom. Old valve stem, old valve stem out. And properly disposed of. See, it's gone. Now, we'll pull our new one in. We got our four new ones. And I actually put a little bit of the lubricant right around the valve stem too, just, I mean, it can't hurt. I look at it that way. Here, you wanna see the close up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what? wow. Mm-hmm. Mm there we go. Slip it through this way. And you grab your valve stem tool, thread it on. Careful not to cross thread. Should say that for all threading applications. If it doesn't thread on smooth and easy, something's wrong, don't force it. All right, once that's on, you just go ahead and you pry it in until there's a nice bit of, uh, until it's all the way in. You wanna make sure you pry in the right angle too. So we got that on the right angle and boop, it's in. Perfect. And for one of our final steps, we will do the tire installation. So we just sort of muscle this in. Uh -huh. Okay, piece of cake. Now, something to take note of. Here, why don't you guys come over here and take a gander. So here's our valve stem. And here's a little mark on the tire. That's the mark that you want to line up with the valve stem to hopefully give you your, your uh, least amount of weight required for balance. So there we go. Mark, valve stem, boom. All right, now we just have to push this the rest of the way on using the machine. There we go, we just take this. I forget what they call this, it. like dove's tail or something, duck's tail, something like that. There we go, we had never adjusted it from before, so that's on there just fine. And what the key is, right, as you're doing this, you have to have your bead over this piece. Oh, it's actually getting loose, let me tighten this up. There we go, it's tightened up a bit. Bead has to go over that. So, over on this side and under right here. And you wanna kinda of hold it in that type of a position, just like that, as it's going on. So here we go. You gotta have this in the lower part of the, of the wheel. Yep, that's what it was. Yep, so make sure you push the bead down into that, that that crevice part of the wheel. Okay, there we go, it's on. Well, I sure did make that look hard, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not a mechanic, but I play a great one on TV. There we go, now it's caught and it's filling up and the bead will pop in just a second. Oh, that was a pretty boring pop. Disconnect our wheel from the machine. We'll check our balance. Woo! Okay, let's see how this new wheel looks. Oh, this actually looks real good. So right now the, the bubble is pretty much right in the center, but I didn't spin it. So we wanna spin it just a little bit, just to make sure it's not sitting on the needle or anything. You wanna make sure that your wheel is all the way down. You can kind of tell it is just by looking at your clearances and your lug holes. Make sure they're all kind of the same. Once this thing comes to a stop, and we'll just take another check and make sure this looks like it's pretty well balanced and we're good to go. Eh. It could probably take maybe an ounce out here. So what we'll do is we'll grab a little stick on weight and put that on there. All right, that last one balanced out perfect. Now we're gonna repeat the process three times. And I figure what more entertaining thing to do from your perspective, than to just watch me do the same thing three times in a row.
And like that, Honest Abe is restored to service. We've installed our new tires, and you know what? It dawned on me. I've always been curious how fast a 69 Lincoln with one muffler can go zero to 60. Let's find out. Okay, now we're going to try the zero to 60. Well, there you have it, 1969 Lincoln, 460, 5,000 pound car, 280 rear end, nine and a half seconds, zero to 60. You can't beat that, that's great. I was pretty impressed. I thought it would be a little bit slower than that. Uh, I had a lot of fun filming it. I hope you all enjoyed watching it. I hope some of you picked up some uh, tips and tricks for my whole tire change, or maybe you learned what not to do. Turns out those tires were date coded 2006. So, yep, tires are that old. Not safe to drive on, at least not at highway speeds. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I had a blast making it. We'll see you guys next time.